Daghang salamat, Mr. Dan Oliver Carrion. And now to discuss the most important decisions on quit claims, releases, and waivers, may I call on former Dolly Undersecretary, a CN expert on Asian labor laws, professor of labor law, and labor law author. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Attorney Josephus B. Jimenez. Attorney. Oh, good afternoon. Mayang hapon. Uh, the reason why uh, not too many are here today, maybe because of the change in schedule and the others might not have been duly informed about the change. So I hope that next meeting we will have more. To today we will have a very important discussion on this topic because for so many times this has been asked in the bar examination and also in actual practice if you are managing a company and uh, some employees would ask to resign instead of being dismissed and uh, in consideration of that agreement, they are asking for financial assistance, management is offering uh, an ex gracia amount. And uh, the employee is asked to sign a document to protect the company. And yet, in not, not a few instances, despite the fact that the employee has already signed a quit claim, he still files a case before the NLRC or the NCMB or the DOLE. And uh, in, in many cases that we will discuss today, the Supreme Court would say that as a general rule, as, as long as the quit claim is properly executed, there was a reasonable consideration. There was no force, there was no coercion. The employee was properly informed. Then the quit claim should be upheld. No? Uh, as, as valid, but in some instances, there are really companies who uh, use their uh, undue influence and uh, moral ascendancy and uh, because of that, the employee would claim that they were not properly informed, they did not understand the document, or the document was okay, but the consideration was scandal scandalously low. In other words, it is shocking to the conscience of man. For instance, under the law, he is supposed to be receiving 500,000 pesos and he is given 50,000. And uh, because of dire necessity, and take note of that phrase, dire city, uh, when you are in a situation to need money with a sense of urgency, for instance, when your child is in the hospital and you need uh, to deposit an amount and the company takes advantage of that situation by uh, releasing to you the amount but asking you to sign document and because the life of your son or daughter is more important to you without reading the document, the employee signs and then later on turns around and say that 
uh, was a dire necessity and I was not in full control of my faculty. The consent was not freely given. The employer was taking advantage of the situation. And so the quit claim that was signed should be considered as not, not properly executed. And it is as if it has not been signed at all. But whatever amount that has been received should be uh, deducted from the proper amount to avoid the uh, undue enrichment. No? So we will start with a case involving uh, a radio broadcasting company and uh, one of its broadcasters and uh, production manager. Take note, huh? production manager. This is not an ordinary rank and file employees. This is a manager with a high level of education, with the full knowledge of what he was signing. He fully understood the document. And the amount given to him was 311,000 pesos. And uh, so in that case, the Supreme Court uh, reversed the decision of the Court of Appeals. Uh, in other words, uh, the, the Court of Appeals ruled in favor of the employee, but the Supreme Court threw Chief Justice Locas Bersamen as ponente or writer of the decision uh, upheld the validity of the quit claim. And uh, for, the, for those who are going to take the bar and those who, who are uh, studying in the College of Law, uh, the first issue here is a procedural issue. Because when you bring a case to the Supreme Court, you cannot raise a factual issue. You should only raise a legal issue. In other words, a question of law. Because if you bring a factual issue, that factual issue that you raise will be set aside by the Supreme Court. Because all the findings of the Court of Appeals, especially if there is unanimity, in the findings of the arbiter, the NLRC, and the Court of Appeals, all of them decided in favor of one side, the Supreme Court will have to uphold it because factual issues are not uh, delved into by the Supreme Court, but only questions of law. Now, in this case, the issue of the validity of a quit claim is a factual issue. It is not a legal issue. So, uh, because, you know, wh why is it a factual issue? Because first, the lower court, namely the Court of Appeals, and the labor tribunals, namely the arbiter and the NLRC, should make a finding whether or not the consideration was reasonable. That is a factual issue. Reasonable consideration. Because a contract, a contract has three elements, consent, object, and consideration. So the NLRC and the labor arbiter as well as the Court of Appeals must make a findings of fact as to the amount, the amount given to the employee, uh, whether it is 
reasonable within the ballpark figure. It may not be exactly the amount he is entitled to under the law, but it is within the the bounds of negotiation, not way below. It is not shocking to the conscience of man. So once that findings is done, that is a finding of fact, and the Supreme Court will honor the finding of fact of the appellate court as well as the NLRC and the labor arbiter. So another findings of fact is whether there was coercion. Was there coercion? Was there fraud? Was there deceit? Was there gross misrepresentation? Yung bang style ng mga ibang manager na sasabihan lang yung mga worker na wag mo nang basahin, perma mo na. No? At uh, wala namang problema yan. So, at uh, management would not even allow the employee to ask questions. So, sasabihin ka agad na, kung marami kang tanong, wag na, hindi na natin ituloy ito. Compromise, maglaban na lang tayo. So, ganong mga style. So, that, that, that should be a statement of fact to be done by the arbiter, the NLRC, and the Court of Appeals. And that, that question of fact, that statement of fact, will bind the Supreme Court if, if the three labels <coughs> agreed. There was agreement among them. A problem, uh, the arbiter decides in favor of the complainant. And then a reverse ng NLRC. And then the, the Court of Appeals would reverse the NLRC and reinstate the decision of the arbiter. So that means there is no unanimity. Now, the Supreme Court in that case can go into factual issue because the lower tribunals and the appellate court were not in agreement as to the facts. So, yung, yung procedural rule in, uh, in our juris, jurisprudence that issues about facts should not be brought, about, uh, brought to the Supreme Court is the general rule. And there are exceptions. And this, and this case is an exception because the decision of the arbiter and the NLRC were not the same as the decision of the Court of Appeals. And here the Court of Appeals uh, made a, a factual finding that there was deceit on the part of management of RMN Mindanao Network, no? but uh, lo lower in the labor tribunals, there was no such finding. So the, on that basis, therefore, the Supreme Court decided to take an exception by reviewing the facts. It should not have been uh, done, but this is an, an exception. So, kayong mga nakikinig sa akin, if you, are, uh, uh, if you have cases in the Supreme Court, from the Court of Appeals, very important na the position papers should be very clear the uh, appeal memorandum should be very clear because uh, the facts of the case must be clear. No, if there are doubts in the facts of the case, if there are contradic contradiction in the facts of the case, the Supreme Court may have to review the facts. No, uh, it, and uh, it will be an exception to the rule forty rule forty five. Uh, Petition, petition or under Rule 45 from the Court of Appeals to the Supreme Court. No? So here the Supreme Court said that the Court of Appeals committed a reversible error when it nullified the quit claim. Because the quit claim here executed by Michael Amurao who was a broadcaster and a production manager, a person of high knowledge 
and a person of uh, uh, great responsibility. He he cannot be hoodwinked. He cannot be uh, duped. He cannot be uh, misled because he was very articulate. He is a broadcaster and he is also a manager. And he signed. He accepted the money of three hundred eleven thousand nine hundred twenty-two. So, when you deal with uh, managerial employees, if you are if you are representing management, it's better because when you deal with illiterate, you no, know, those less educated workers. They are the ones that are protected really by the law. When uh, you ask them to sign documents, especially in high sounding English, that they would later claim they did not understand. So because of that, there is more, there is more chances that those with lesser educational attainment with lower level of knowledge would have better chances before the Supreme Court. Here, the, the, the Supreme Court admonished the Court of Appeals because it was very, the Court of Appeals was very hasty and reckless in ruling that Michael was coerced into signing the quit claim. No? The, the Court of Appeals noted that Michael had refused to sign, but he accepted the money, but, and then later on, he really signed it. No? He signed it, he accepted the money. No? And so the Supreme Court said that uh, you cannot say that 311,000 is not reasonable, and uh, also that Michael was not coerced. There was no vitiated consent. He signed the document knowingly, freely, and voluntarily. Tatlo yan, ha? With full knowledge, with the freedom to say no or to, to say yes, and exercises, exercise his voluntariness in affixing his signature. So with the three elements of knowingly, freely, and voluntarily, consent was freely given. There was no vitiated uh, consent. So in that case, uh, the Supreme Court decided in favor of the employer. Because the Supreme Court said, not all quit claims are invalid or against public policy. So uh, for, for all of you, if you are asked whether a quit claim is valid or not, make sure that these two elements are present. Number one, uh, was it, was it uh, one girl? Parabang uh, one girl is, uh, an act of deceit or deception, an act of uh, mischief by management by not fully disclosing uh, what was the meaning of the document no? from a gullible person. So if, if you are a manager like the broadcaster, uh, uh, Mr. Michael Amorau III, uh, he could not be considered as a gullible person. And then the terms of the settlement are not unconscionable. So because of the two, no, consideration and consent. No, importante yun sa elements ng contract, consideration and consent. Because quit claim is considered as a contract. There is a meeting of the minds between the employer and the employee that I received this uh, settlement amount and I will sign. You know, I do that you may give or you give that I may do. You know? uh, your, your giving 
of the separation uh, of the settlement amount will constitute as the consideration for my uh, object, which is to sign the quit claim with consent. So consent, object, and consideration. So you should always remember that you know, valid quit claims should be respected. In other words, uh, the Supreme Court said, we, we should not be invalidating the agreements of between employers and employee. Even agreements that are highly controversial. If you remember the case that I mentioned earlier about the case of Insular Hotel Davao, uh, uh, Waterfront, whereby uh, Mr. Gatsalyan, as the owner of Waterfront, entered into a contract with uh, the union in Davao. And the, the stipulation in the contract is that the employees represented by the union uh, would agree or they have agreed to reduction of their salary as well as withdrawal of certain benefits as a consideration for not undertaking a retrenchment. So the employer was able to convince the, the union na kung ayaw ninyong retrenchment, kung ayaw ninyong magtanggal ako ng tao, kayo ba ay willing na ibaba ang sahod nyo? That is the only way for us to remain competitive. Because for, for so many years, you have been mismanaged. No? Kaya pinagbili itong hotel na ito because sobra-sobra na yung sahod ng mga tao, it's, it's beyond the level of the market. And we cannot compete in a very uh, competitive business environment because how can we recover our cost with so high an overhead like that? So now the union agreed. The basta there is no retrenchment, we are willing and we are accepting the offer. So that is a very controversial uh, ag agreement. And yet the Supreme Court upheld the validity of that contract. No, because the Supreme Court said, what is prohibited by law is when the diminution of salary is imposed by management on the employee. But if it is negotiated, if there is meeting of the minds, that is not contrary to public policy because that is the only way to save the company from ultimate bankruptcy. It's better that we reduce our salary and still we have jobs rather than uh, saying that we must have jobs and yet uh, we have high salary, but uh, we will lose our jobs. So those are the realities, economic realities. It was also that another controversial contract which uh, involved a, 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 a quit claim, a virtual quit claim, is when uh, the union, the, the employees of Philippine Airlines belonging to the third union, which is the PALIA, Philippine Airlines Employees Association, agreed not to be given salary increase for 10 years as a condition for stoppage of retrenchment. So more CBA moratorium, moratorium of CBA increases was upheld by the Supreme Court as valid because it was negotiated, it was agreed upon, it was ratified by the employees, majority of them. You know, and uh, in effect, that was a quick claim. Uh, that was a, a collective quick claim that we hereby waive our right to receive 
uh, salary increase for the next 10 years. And what was the consideration given by Mr. Lucio Tan? They were given free uh, shares of stocks. I think 60,000 shares of stock for every employee. Huh? Every employee was, were, were, were given, and that has never happened in Philippine business. It was only Lu Mr. Lucio Tan who has done that. Because the, the theory of Lucio Tan is that you become a co-owner of the company, then you will stop striking against the company because you are the owner. You will stop uh, creating trouble, no? So if you will combine all your shares of stocks, you can elect three members of the board out of 15. So the Supreme Court said, this is a very creative way of solving the problem. And then the company is saved from paying salary increases. When you have a collective bargaining agreement, you always have a salary increase every year. And yet the employees waive and issued a collective quit claim. And the consideration was 60,000 shares of stock for every one of them, free. Maybe guys, sa kanila walang bayad, and it will earn uh, it will earn uh, dividends as a stockholder. So the employees became stockholders. And uh, therefore, uh, that was that was considered a valid quit claim, and it should be respected by the Supreme Court. And here in the case, going back to Michael Amurao III, uh, there were many indications why the Supreme Court upheld the validity of the quit claim. First, Mac Michael stated in the quit claim itself. Kaya maganda yung isulat ninyo sa quit claim na I, I have read fully, no? Aking nabasa at naintindihan ang lahat ng nakasaad sa kasulatang ito. No? And uh, I signed this on my own volition without any pressure, without any deceit, without gross misrepresentation. I am aware of the full consequences of this document. So, and pangalawa, being a radio broadcasting, broadcaster, and a production manager at that, it would be virtually impossible to say that he was misled into signing. No? He was, he is a knowledgeable person. Besides the language, and the content of the quit claim were clear and uncomplicated. Malinaw, hindi, hindi couch in highly legalistic term. It is uh, worded in ordinary terminologies. And uh, he is a manager. He knows the meaning of what was uh, stated. And then Pangalawa, the settlement money was credible and reasonable. Considering that he, he did not complain about the amount. In other words, uh, gusto lang niya manghingi ng moral damages eh, at saka exemplary damages. Uh, which was granted by the labor arbiter. And uh, pag dinagdag yung moral damages at saka yung exemplary damages, aabot ng 500,000. But pag, without that, equal lang sa natanggap niya, 311,000. And then he was required to sign the quit claim as a condition for the release. Pag sinabi ba ng management that 
we will release your pay only if you sign that document. Is that is that a ground to nullify the quit claim? The, the Supreme Court said no. Kasi wala namang management. Nobody, no management would release the amount if you do not sign the quit claim. Because the quit claim will protect the management from double, double uh, liability. Because if you do not sign that contract at that quit claim, that means that you have a plan to file a case against the company. So why should the company release the amount to you? We will just release later on after uh, after uh, if you choose litigation in case uh, instead of of compromise. So we better litigate and fight it out, and then whoever wins, if you have a, if you win, then here is the money. It's waiting for you. So having agreed to part with that amount, which the Supreme Court said substantial, RMN took steps to protect his interests no? by let, letting him sign the document. So the, the, the signing of the document is the company's protection for itself. Because if you are audited, if you are asked by the board of directors, bakit mo binigay itong amount na ito without any documentation, without any assurance that he will not claim this amount again. So ang mapasama niyan, di yung, yung general manager. No? So again, the Supreme Court uh, stated that hindi lahat ng dire necessity is a justification to, nali, to nullify. Kasi ang drama ni uh, Mr. Michael Amurao III is that kung hindi ko pipirmahan yan, wala nang kakainin ang aking pamilya, hindi na makapag-aral yung mga anak ko. So, but pressure uh, Pressure, not all pressures will nullify a contract. It is only the pressure that deprives you of the freedom. In other words, kasi tatlo yung knowingly, freely, and voluntarily. So, knowingly, meaning you know what you are getting into. You know what is the consequence of your signature. So knowingly, then freely, having known, you have the freedom to say yes or to say no. Now, if that pressure did not deprive you of that freedom, then that will not affect the validity of the quick claim. But uh, you just remember that three. Did you sign the agreement knowingly? Kasi madali lang yung sabihin consent eh, under obligation and contract. Consent, object, and consideration. Yung pagbigay mo ng consent. No? Parang kasal din yan eh. If you say I do, did you say I do knowingly? Nasasabihin ng pari. Tinatanggap mo ba itong pangit na ito na maging husband mo? No. So, you know, knowing, you, knowingly, alam mo, hindi ka bulag. Hindi ka, hindi ka bingi. You, hindi ka bulag. Nakita mo. No? Tin, nakita mo, tinanggap mo, knowingly. And then, you have the freedom to say no. Hindi yung pwede eh. Kasubuan na sir eh. Nasubo na ako eh. Nasubo. Yan yung mga kasabihan ng mga bayot. Nasubo. No? O oh, nasubo. But at the last moment, kahit sa harap na ng pare, pwede kang magsin no. O kahit magsin yes ka pa, hindi mo pepermahan yung contract. Eh, wala rin. No? 
So knowingly, freely, freely, you have the freedom to say yes or no, and then having the knowledge and the freedom voluntarily with full consent of your will. You manifest your consent by affixing your signature, which is the best evidence of having given your consent, your signature. Here, the consideration was not even proven to be unconscionable. So the Supreme Court said, the quick claim should be honored. Kailangan na merong palabra di honor, uh, palabra di honor ang pumipirma. Alam mo, mga Chinese kasi wala nang pirma-pirma eh. Basta may tiwala sa iyo ang Chinese, pairaming ka, 5 million. Yan ang tinatawag doon sa Binondo, Binondo Central Bank. Lakang pera, manghiram ka, pahiramin ka 5 million. Pag hindi ka magbayad, hindi ka naman ihahabla. Papatayin ka lang. No? So, mamili ka. No? Eh, sa sabong nga, sa mga sugarol, eh. sinyas-sinyas lang sa kamay. May meeting of the mind na. Eh. Sinyas-sinyas lang yun. Walang, man, walang mandadaya sa mga sugarol. Sa mga sabongero, isang daliri lang sa sabihin magkakaintindihan na so the quit claims should be honored and uh, you should be true to your word now the, the, here is another case hepti ohero versus a uh, philippine communication and supply corporation and the the same the same decision it's the same decision. Uh, the Supreme Court uh, upheld the validity of the of the quit claim. Later on, I will show you some decision where the Supreme Court did not honor the uh, the quit claim. So to to be valid, the quit claim must have consent, object and consideration. And when we say consent, the, the yes, the, the concurrence must be given knowingly, freely, and voluntarily. You, you must always repeat these words because the examiner would be inclined to give you good remark if you use the words that are spoken or written by the Supreme Court in the jurisprudence that is applicable. You know? So to summarize, in general, quit claims, releases, and waivers are valid, provided that consent is knowingly, freely, and voluntarily given. The elements of a valid contract are present, namely consent, object, and consideration. An advance waiver of an unaccrued wage or benefits are not allowed because they are not, they are contrary to public policy. What is what do you mean by advance waiver? Bagong hire palang ang empleyado pina execute ng general waiver ng empleyado sabi na halimbawa security guard uh, pinaperma ng agency ang security guard na magtrabaho sila ng 12 hours every day pero ang payroll nila is 8 hours so every day we waive nila yung hours na overtime Eh, mga security guard because wala namang mataas na naabot. Iperma na lang sila. Kapit sila sa patalid. Pero even if they sign that that is an advance waiver, 
hindi pa na-earn yung overtime, we need na nila in advance. Another example of advance waiver is yung OFW, maayos yung kontrata nung umalis sa Pilipinas. Pagdating doon sa Kuwait or sa Abu Dhabi or sa Dubai, sa Riyadh, sa Damam, sa Jubail, papipirmahin sila ng bagong kontrak. Kontrak substitution na yan under the Republic Act 8042 that is an, an act of illegal recruitment. Pero doon, nakalagay doon, I hereby authorize my employer to have the right to terminate my services with or without cost. Can you imagine that that is an advance waiver of your security of tenure? So I am given an amount of salary that is higher than the normal salary, but I waive my right to overtime. That is also not valid because that is an advance waiver. The benefits have not yet accrued. It is not yet collectible, and yet you waive it in advance. That is not allowed because that is an advance waiver of a monetary benefit. Yeah, yeah. So that's the uh, various, uh, So in another case, the Supreme Court upheld the validity of quit claims because the voluntariness of the execution was proven. And there was no deceit. You know, the best way talaga para sa mga employer is to notarize your quit claim, not with a private notary public, but with the office of the regional director of the Dole. Ang problema lang pag dinala mo sa Dole, kakausapin ng Director yung tao at sasabihin, bakit ka pumayag ito, maliit lang ito, dapat mag-insist ka ng malaki, di agrabyado ka dito. Yun ang problema. That is the risk. Pero pag may kaibigan ka ng arbiter, uh, if you have a friend, an arbiter, or anybody in Dole, and he will sign it, attest it, because they are authorized, no? as if they are notary public, then that means that yung deceit, the element of deceit, ay mawawala na yan. Kasi how can there be deceit when it is signed in front of the Department of Labor, which is an agency tasked with protection to protect the workers. But even then, no, pag ang consideration is very, very shocking to the conscience of man. Disproportionate. Uh, another word is grossly disproportionate to what he is entitled to. Then the Supreme Court may nullify it. Even if it was voluntarily executed. So, without any evidence, ito, ito, this is a matter of evidence. Ang tanong dyan is, who has the burden to produce evidence? Is it the employer or the employee? Ang usual answer niyan is the employer. But, here, since there is a document, and the document enjoys the presumption of regularity. 
he who attacks the validity of this document has the burden to prove it. So, kung ang management is able to produce a quit claim, attach the quit claim with a position paper, that quit claim in the eyes of the law enjoys the presumption of regularity. In other words, what is the meaning of that? If there is no evidence, then that will hold. If there is no evidence to the contrary, if there is no evidence that it is a forgery or a falsification document, falsified document, or that it was obtained through fraud or deceit. So anybody who wants to attack the authenticity of the document, who wants to assail the genuineness of the signature, must probe it. So it is the employee who says that it is not authentic, it is not genuine, then present evidence. In the proof beyond reasonable doubt, it is substantial evidence. You must have that quantum of proof which a reasonable mind would accept as sufficient to support a logical conclusion. I repeat, huh? what is substantial evidence? Lagi natin naririnig yan, substantial evidence. Sa labor cases, you must have substantial evidence. Meaning, you have a quantum of proof whether it is documentary or real. No? And that quantum of proof would be accepted by a reasonable mind as sufficient to support a conclusion, a logical conclusion. So kahit hindi mo nakita personally, pero yung mga circumstantia taken together will make you conclude logically. Pariyo yan sa mga in-example ko dito, na kung ikaw, kung ikaw halimbawa, Mr. Neil, Kung ang asawa mo, nakita mo pumasok sa motel kasama yung another man, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, tapos lumabas 5 o'clock. Hindi mo na kailangan na makita sa loob ng motel kung anong ginawa. You can already make a conclusion, logical conclusion, kung anong ginawa nitong dalawa. Kasi kung criminal case ang i-file mo, hindi mananalo kasi wala kang eyewitness testimony. Hindi mo nakita one naked truth on top of the other. Kailangang i-bribe mo yung rumboy, buksan ang pinto at makita mo yung dalawa. That is for criminal. But this we are talking of labor case. The, the mere fact na siya pumasok at lumabas two hours later silang dalawa in labor law, that is enough. Sub substantial evidence na yan. Pareho lang yan sa isang uh, warehouse man. Siya may hawak ng susi. Tapos nakita sa CCTV na pumasok siya Paglabas niya, may dala siyang bag. Hindi nakita ko anong content na bag. Nung iniimbentaryo ang mga property sa loob, may nawala. Sino? Yan bang nakita sa CCTV na siya and he was the only person who was seen like that. That is enough in labor law. But it might not be enough in criminal law. Because the body of the crime the the corpus delicti, which is the property stolen, was not recovered. So 
dito sa labor law, huwag kayong maghanap ng proof being reasonable doubt. Not even preponderance evidence of evidence. Enough na yung win. You put two and two together. Pareho doon sa nangyari sa Maranao Hotel. Na ang room boy, siya lang ang may access sa room. Nawala yung pera ng Japanese. Yes. Walang ibang makapasok sa room na yan. Kaya yung mga kasama ni yung flight attendant doon sa hotel. Hindi pa yung nakakalusot kasi nag nagkuampa nagbe-build pa ang case eh. kasi they they, they were really in the scene of the crime. Nandoon sila nung namatay. Kasi did on arrival meaning patay na yon. So sino yung nandoon nung namatay? So sa criminal malaki pa na nagutan nila do. Sa kung sa labor yon tapos na sila. Kung sa labor yon sa labor case kahit hindi pa hintayin yan. Enough na sila lahat. Tanggal sila. Kaya kung kayo, mag-manage kayo ng company, huwag kayo maghanap ng proof yan reasonable daw. Kasi walang matatanggal. You can never terminate an employment if you look for uh, proof yan reasonable daw. Now, ito na. Quit claims are binding because they are contract. Remember, ah, quit claims are contracts because they are they are signed by the parties. There is a meeting of the minds. There is an object. There is a con there is a consent, and there is consideration. Quit claims are contracts. Valid by yung contracts or not valid, as long as you can prove consent, object, and consideration, and consent was given knowingly. No, freely and voluntarily. So, when the person signing the contract did so voluntarily and knowingly because he fully understand what he was getting into, the transaction must be recognized as valid and binding. Kasi hindi pwede na yung tao pipirma ng contract knowingly and then later on there, he changed his mind. No? He changed his mind. Sabi na, Ma'am, uh, bawiin ko yung pinirmahan kong quit claim. You cannot do that because bilateral yan eh, contract. A bilateral contract agreed between two parties consenting adults and signatures were already affixed there was already meeting of the minds you cannot unilaterally withdraw from that para yang resignation eh. no when you resign today you resign kung ako management accept it immediately do not In a way, pwede mong bawiin yung pag-accept mo eh. Pero pag hindi mo in-accept yan, if he resigns today and tomorrow, wala pang acceptance ng resignation, when it draw niya yung kanyang resignation, it can still be done because there was no acceptance yet. But the moment that there was acceptance, you, the, the employee can no longer withdraw. So, ganun din sa quit claim. No? Ito. Ang empleyado. Mataas ang katungkulan. Mataas ang pinag-aralan. And uh, he is knowledgeable. Especially if you are a lawyer. You are a lawyer. You sign a quit claim. Pagkatapos mag-file ka ng kaso, baka madisbar ka pa. Because you are, uh, you are not being truthful. Nobody will believe you that you did not understand what you signed. 
unless nagdroga ka or nalasing ka na hindi mo na intindihan ang pinirmahan mo. So, ma- mas disadvantage pa yung mataas ang pinag-aralan mo eh. Lalo na kung abogado ka. Ako, abogado, ilang beses na ako naloko. Kasi madali lang akong uto-utuin ng mga taong magaling maglambutsing. Tapos bumirma ako. Later on, alam ko naloko ako dito. Ah. Pero hindi na ako magreklamo because nakakahiya abogado tayo, magreklamo tayo. Hindi tayo paniwalaan. Baka pagalitan pa tayo ng judge. Eh. Oh. You are only wasting the time of the court. You are a lawyer. You are supposed to be able to protect yourself. Are you saying you come to this court and say you, you say that to nullify your contract because you did not know? Nobody will believe you. Oh, mga abogado ka, hindi mo alam yung pinirmahan mo. You are not an ordinary laborer. You are mature, intelligent, educated with a college degree. You cannot be tricked into performing an act against your will. Management did not apply fraud, did not deceive you, did not misrepresent. And despite that, you have knowingly, freely, and voluntarily signed the document. So, kayo pag magtake kayo ng bar, you use the three words. In this case, no? the plaintiff knowingly, freely, and voluntarily, empathic yun eh. Makikita na examiner yan. Nakita mo yung tatlong elements ng consent. No? So, mataas ang grado mo dyan. Assuming that pressures were exerted, there was no urgency for him to sign. So kung ikaw na pressure ka, ito advice ko sa inyo, ha, if you are under pressure, sabihin mo lang, can I bring this document at home and let me ha- give me time to think it over. Hindi yung para lang mapagbigyan ka at hindi sumama ang loob mo, pipirmahan ko. Pero later on, na masmasan ka na, sabihin mo, bakit ko ba pinirmahan yun? No? Tapos, para yung merong, merong mga ahente ng insurance na magaling mabulaklak ang dila, tapos madali ka mapapirma, tapos later on, nung nag-isip-isip ka na, Magkano ang babayaran ko dito, quarterly or monthly? Tapos, inaway ka pa ng asawa mo. So, ngayon, gusto mo ngayon i-retract. No, mahirap yung pag-retract kasi there was already meeting of the minds. Pwede ka ng kasuhan dyan ng breach of contract. Kasi pinirmahan mo na eh. No? So, Why is the government very solicitous uh, of the rights of the workers? Because the government is mandated by the Constitution to protect labor. At ang protection ng, ng, ng labor is against the employers, against the union, against the government, against the lawyers and against himself against the employer because sometimes the employers would use its superior knowledge of the law superior uh, moral ascendancy superior rank superior resources Superior influence. So, here comes an employee with little knowledge. No bargaining leverage. 
So he who has less in life should have more protection by law. The state is the parents' patri protecting the one who is the disadvantaged side. When the Constitution say the state shall afford protection to labor, it is just to label the situation because it is not label. Kaya minsan yung mga biyenan, yung mga ugangan nakikialam eh. Bakit? Sabi niya, yung anak ko, ang wife niya sobrang katalino, very articulate. Articulate, maarte na, makulit pa. Sobrang talino, yung husband walang masabi. Kasi yung husband, kulang sa katalinuhan, kundi buwapo lang siya. Yun lang ang quality niya. Nagpakasal siya ng wife niya sobrang ganda. Ah, sobrang talino. Kahit hindi masyadong maganda. O ngayon, nakikialam ang binan yung yung ina nung lalaki kasi sabi niya medyo na disadvantage yung anak ko diyan ah parang ina under under na yung anak ko kasi sobrang talino yung wife so the mother in law will enter to give aid and comfort and support to the husband to level yan ang reason why quit claims are declared null and void when the one the signatory especially the employee is of lesser knowledge lesser rank kasi mandate talaga yan ng government eh. ang dole kaya nakikialam because dole is an instrumentality of the state it is a duly authorized agency mandated to enforce the constitutional mandate to protect labor. Pangalawa, union. Kung ang union na bribe ng management, nag-issue ng waiver, or withdraw yung case, alam niyo, may decision ang Supreme Court dyan. Ha? Ito, ha, you should remember this. The union can file a case in behalf of the employees as part of the right of the union to represent representation without the consent of the individual employee the union can file a case for instance magfile tayo ng case kasi hindi tayo binayaran nitong benepisyo natin na dininay ng management so Union lang nagpahil ha. Union president lang. Hagip sila. Dalawang libo. Sa signature ng union president ang makinabang dalawang libo. For the purpose of filing. Pero for the purpose of withdrawing the union president cannot withdraw the case unless with the consent of all the individual. Halimbawa, Sampo yung empleyado. Pumirma ang onion, kasama yung apat. Ang anin, hindi pumirma. Ang nawidraw lang ay yung para sa apat. Hindi nawidraw yung sa anin because the state protects labor from the union. So, hindi maaring i-withdraw ng union yung kaso na union din ang nag-file because withdrawal of a case requires the consent of the individual employee. So ang pagpasok sa so kaso, pagsampa ng kaso, no need for special power of attorney. Because the, the fact <coughs> na kami ang union sumanib ka sa union at nanalo kami sa certification election we represent you and our power to represent you 
does not need a power of attorney. We are fully authorized to fight for your interest, to fight for your right. But if we waive, if we waive, we withdraw. We issue a quit claim. That quit claim will be not enforceable in so far as those who did not authorize. Ganon din sa gobyerno. Limbawa, ikaw, labor arbiter ka. Sampo yung complainant. Ang pumirma lang sa quit claim. Lima. Tapos dinismiss mo yung buong kaso. Mali yung ginama mo. You just dismiss the case in so far as those who signed the withdrawal. The case will proceed for the rest of those who did not withdraw the case. So the state protects the workers from the government and also from their own lawyers. Kung ang lawyer pumayag na i-withdraw ang case, pero yung lawyer na yan walang power of attorney to withdraw, that lawyer may be suspended by the Supreme Court or even disbarred because he could not withdraw without the written authority of his client. And lastly, the Supreme Court protects the employee from, his, from himself. Kung siya ay reckless hindi siya maingat, kulang siya sa kaalaman, siya ay mangmang, pagbatas na ang pag-uusapan, at pumirma siya, he will be protected from his own ignorance. No? Pag siya, pag, pag totoo talaga na ignorante siya, eh, pero pag sobrang talino, tapos biglang naging ignorante, Ni ni naman the the law you the law has a discernment is able to distinguish what is true and what is false what is right and what is wrong no kaya nga nilagay ko ito eh the workers are even protected from their own indiscretion because according to the supreme court The individual employee and the management are not on the same level. So the law will uplift the one who has less. The, the law, therefore, is the balancing mechanism. The law seeks to balance. Na kung ano ang uh, pagkakulangan ng mga manggagawa ay yan ay dadagdagan ng batas sa pamamagitan ng protection. Eh, importante ang protection eh. Ito. Ito ha, hindi ito bago. Kahit manager ka, protected ka pa rin pag ill-advised ka. Iba kasi yung kaso kanina yung sa RMN si Michael Amoral. Kasi hindi naman siya under stress. Pag ang isang manager, manager ka, talino ka, okay. Pero under stress ka, no? you were subjected to insult na spar of the moment na kapag bitiw ka ng salita. Malis na lang kaya ako dito. No? As far of the moment, nakapirma ka ng quick claim. Pero even if you are a manager, the Supreme Court said, you will still be protected because at that time you were not in complete control of your faculty. Minsan, sa, may panahon sa buhay natin na 
kahit baka gaano ka katalino naluluko ka pa rin di, di ba attorney wagas ikaw abogada ka pero meron talagang panahon na naisahan ka at matanong mo sa sarili mo bakit ba ako nagpapal nagpapaluko bakit ako na bakit ba ako pumayag oh aminin mo attorney wagas no? na merong mga panahon gaano ka kahit gaano ka katalino gaano ka katalino meron kasing iba uh, may iba na matalino sila sa negosyo matalino sila sa klase Meron namang matalino sa pag-ibig, bubo naman sa negosyo. Hindi ibibigay sa iyo lahat ng Panginoon, di ba, Ma'am Cora? Oh. Ikaw, uh, Ma'am Cora, experience ka na sa buhay. May mga panahon talaga na kahit anak mo, maluloko ka. Eh. No? Anak mo, maluloko ka. Minsan, eh, uh, na nabibigla ka eh na naniniwala ka din later on pag may mas masan ka nag-iisa ka lang sabi mo bakit ba ako pumayag parang parang nawala na ako sa nawala ako sa sarili ko ah. bakit ako pumayag kaya nga dito ang sabo uh, uh, because man perfect if god gives him a will and an intellect There are times when you are subjected to certain uh, external pressure or bodily or physical uh, suffering. Minsan uh, hindi ka na hindi ka na uh, completely control ang sarili mo eh. So, the law 'yan ang ipaliwanag mo sa position paper mo. Sabihin mo na I am really a wise person, but at that moment because of the No overwhelming pressure. I was under this is this illusionment, emotional trouble. I was suffering from mental anguish. No, so I was led to do that. But you know, under normal circumstances, that is not the proper judgment that I should have made. Ganon yon. Protection against managerial maneuverings. Protection for our harassed OFWs. OC. Dati ang OFW, ang tawag kasi niyan, OCW. Eh. Overseas Contract Workers yun eh. E ngayon, naging Overseas Filipino Workers. No? Yung mga lalo na, mga domestic helper. yung mga casual, mga provisionary. Kasi ang sabi nga ni Justice Isagana ni Cruz, na, uh, si Justice Puno na merong mga employer na ha, yung, yung tinatawag na Indo, yung 555, na they want to perpet, they want to make you a perpetual casual. Eh para sa akin ang numero uno ng violation nito ang gobyerno kasi na sa gobyerno ang daming casual 20 years na magpunta ka sa city hall, magpunta ka sa Capitolio. 20 years na casual pa rin. Tapos the government is pressuring the private sector na irregularize nila yung mga mga contractuals. Pero sa gobyerno mismo ang dami. The government is The number one violator of its own law. No, they they are not uh, they are not uh, walking their talk. No, they they. Parang you follow what I say, but do not follow what I do. So ito, marami yan. Uh, settlement of disputes by way of compromise. No is a desirable practice but no but the state protects the worker from unfair and unauthorized waivers of rights 
Yan. Kailangan yung mga lawyer must be armed with a special power of attorney to enter into a compromise agreement. And the court should not accept a compromise agreement signed by a lawyer where the lawyer is not able to prove that he was fully authorized by his client. Hindi kailangan, kailangan ang court should not be hasty. Huwag magmamadali na magmamadali na i-dismiss ang kaso kaagad. When there is no proof that the ultimate beneficiary of the case, which is the client, did not express in writing his conformity to the compromise. Ito, itong kaso ng ESO, Philippines. Uh, we rule that when it comes to individual benefits accruing to a member of the union, no, uh, the members themselves are the real parties not the union. So this should be the one that will enter into a compromise or a waiver, not the union. The union, if ever, should be authorized. And ito ha, individual written authorization ito. Individual written authorization. So, bakit ba ang Estado masyadong protective sa labor? Because what is involved here is their means of livelihood. Ano ba ang mawawala sa kumpanya? Pera. A pera that is property. Ang kalaban niya, life eh. Kasi life is livelihood. Pag anong nawawala sa empleyado? Yung kanyang livelihood. Livelihood is kabuhayan. So, mawala na siya ng means sa kanyang kabuhayan pag wala yung livelihood. Samantalang ang nawala sa management is just property. So, as between life and property, the state will protect the life. Because yan, sinasabi ng Supreme Court, They are the economically disadvantaged party. They are no longer at the mercy of the employer. No? They are under the protection of the state. Kaya, Sabihin mo si President Marcos dictator pero yung protection to labor nag-umpisa yan sa Constitution ni Marcos 1973. Yung labor code which is the document that provides for the many, many protection to labor from labor standard to labor relations. Those are documents signed by Marcos. It, it was not passed by Congress because there was no Congress in 1974. It was abolished by Proclamation 1081. There was no House of Representatives. There was no Senate. And it was a constitutional dictator who signed the Labor Code by virtue of Proclamation 1081. Yan. And the state is considered parents patre. No? So ito, if this will be asked in the bar, if an OFW was compelled to sign a new contract upon arrival in the host country, and in that contract, he waived his right to security of tenure, and he authorized his employer to terminate his services at will and without and even without cause 
when he comes back to the Philippines, is he under estoppel from questioning the contract? Is the waiver valid and binding? So, sagutin natin yan. No. The employee is not under estoppel. Alam mo, yan ang secret sa answering the bar examination. Eh. Pag ang tanong, is he under estoppel? Sagutin yung agad. No. The employee is not under estoppel. Kaysa pa ikot-ikot pa yung sagot nyo. Sir Kitos, you have to be frontal, use the frontal attack. If you are asked if the defense is tenable, no, the defense is not tenable. Is the contract valid? No, the contract is not valid. And then you state the law or the legal principle, then make a conclusion after uh, citing the facts. Apply the law to the facts and make the conclusion. So, you cannot waive security of tenure. In fact, you cannot waive, you cannot waive jurisdiction. Pareho yung kaso ng Saudi Arabian uh, Saudi Arabian Airline versus Rebisensio, yung flight attendant. Yung mga flight attendant, pumirman ng waiver na pag, pag meron daw kaso, hindi ang Philippine Courts ang may jurisdiction, kundi yung Saudi Arabia. Sa Pakistan Airline, ganun din. Y yung court daw sa Pakistan ang may jurisdiction. Sabi ng Supreme Court, through Justice Leonin, you cannot waive jurisdiction. The parties cannot stipulate jurisdiction. You know, there is only one instance in the labor code where the parties can agree on jurisdiction. And what is that? It is voluntary arbitration. Voluntary arbitration. All interpretation and implementation of a collective bargaining agreement. Letter A and letter B. All questions on the enforcement of company personnel policies. Letter C. All other dispute, all other issues by agreement of the parties. So kahit sinabi ng labor code na ang unfair labor practice sa labor arbitrarian, kahit sinabi pa na ang termination dispute ay sa labor arbitrarian, if the parties will agree, it, can, it should be brought to voluntary arbitration because under the Constitution, it is the preferred mode of dispute settlement. So that is the only instance that I know where jurisdiction can be agreed upon by the parties. All others are not subject to agreement. They are dictated by the law. Hindi pwedeng yung Pilipino pumirma ng contract na pag may tayo may problema, walang jurisdiction ang Philippine courts. No? Hindi pwede yung agreement na yan. That is contrary to law. No? Now, when the quit claim is deemed invalid, the amount received must be returned to the employer. Okay. Pumirma ka ng quit claim. Pagtapos ang quit claim na declared invalid, eh nakatanggap ka ng pera. Either isauli mo yan, or pag dinagdagan ka, isa, ididak na yung natanggap mo. Kasi anjo enrichment yan eh. No. Ayan, babayaran ka ng buo. Limbawa, pareho nung si, si Michael Amuraw. Nakatanggap na siya ang 311,000. E kung ang judgment, kung limbawa na-annul yun, kung balik natin ang decision, kung na-annul yung decision na yun, 
at ang kanyang entitlement ay 600,000, di i-minus na yung 311,000. Hindi yung buong 600,000 ibigay sa kanya because he has already received it. Yan. Ulit-ulit yan. Ito yung meron namang isang decision uh, when the quit claim is scandalously masyadong inaapi naman ang tao. Sobrang liit ang binigay. No? Kahit ba freely given niya, kahit, kahit niya pinirmahan yan, kahit authentic yung signature niya, kung masyadong nadihado ang tao because of the amount. Parang bumili ka ng kalabaw pagkatapos ang presyo ng kalabaw parang aso lang. Eh, sobra na yun sa contract Uh, sa object uh, consent object and consideration no? yan ganun din eh, pa, pa, pabalik-balik ito so ang ang ating conclusion dito no conclusion remember the three elements of the contract Consent, object, and consideration. So kung may depekto sa consent uh, because of fraud, uh, misrepresentation, or uh, deceit, or there was a job pressure, or there was intimidation, coercion. So manual job. And then consideration. It is shocking to the conscience of man it is grossly disproportionate with that you can answer that it should be annulled on that basis but all others no? especially if the person concerned is highly educated yeah so It's already 7 o'clock. Kaya, kaya ako binago ko ito kasi meron din akong prayer meeting. Eh. Pag 7.30, prayer meeting na ako. Eh. Alam mo, uh, Attorney Wagas, pag abogado ka at ang edad mo 70 years old, at bumalik ka na sa Panginoon, no? ang, ang, ang buhay natin sa mundo, pag I-divide mo into four, uh, Mr. Karyon. I-divide mo into four your life. Yung, fir- yung first 20 years of your life, mag-aral ka. You build your strength, your power. Tapos sa uh, second 20 years, pamilya yun. No? P- primero sarili, sunod pamilya. Ang third, career. Career, business. Pero yung fourth na balik ka na sa Panginoon, mag-serve ka sa simbahan, no? Para magpalakas ka sa Panginoon kasi kung baga sa kwan, you are in the sunset of your life. No? Kahit may COVID o walang COVID, bihira lang yung makaabot ng isang daan taon ni. Eh. Bihira lang. Kaya mo, tingnan mo si, si Sir Dudong Gulyas. No? Parang namimiss din ni Sir Dudong yung mag-report siya sa UB araw-araw. No? Pero dumating na talaga panahon na mga anak na nagsasabi, hindi dahil gustong kuhanin ng mga anak yung property, kundi mahal nilang magulang nila, gusto nilang magpahinga. No? Ano ka ba? Ano bang ginagawa mo sa buhay mo? Lagi ka na lang nagtrabaho, wala kang enjoyment. Hindi pa rin sa akin dahil pag ako nagtrabaho, enjoy ako. Pag inalisan mo ako ng trabaho, pag inalisan mo akong trabaho, doon ako mamamatay. Kaya yung mga taong nagre-retire, doon siya lang manghihina. Alam mo ba yung father ni Regalado Maambong. Si Regalado Maambong, dating din natin sa UB yun eh. 
uh, naging delegate dyan sa Constitutional Commission ni President Cory. Ang ama niya, si Judge Joaquin Maambong, nung araw, nung 1960s, 1970s, isa lang ang judge sa buong Cebu City. Isa lang. Si Joaquin Maambong. Alam mo yan si Judge Joaquin Maambong. Pumunta yan sa court, naglalakad lang sa City Hall. Lakad lang siya. Tapos pag uwi niya, naglalakad, bilhin ng saging. 